What is Microsoft Fabric? Well, here's my 10 minute non techie guide to what Microsoft Fabric is and what all the fuss is about. Let's go. You could think about Fabric just like you think about Microsoft Office. Office consists of Excel, Word, PowerPoint, all those sort of applications sitting on a on OneDrive and SharePoint. Well, you can think about Fabric in a similar way. We've got Power BI, we've got these other sort of data engineering tools, data factory, data science tools that all used to be separate products and now they're being brought together under one sort of uh, platform, if you like, called Microsoft Fabric. And that all sits then within the Power BI environment that we're used to, the online workspace type environment. Okay, so for those of you who've used Power BI before, if you log in to Power BI, you get this experience. If you've signed up for Fabric, you can click down here and you can get more experiences, all these tools under one hood. And under the hood, they're all sitting on one lake. The concept being you can put all your data in this consistent layer. You don't really see this one lake, but it just, that's where the workspaces and things, fabric workspaces, essentially what we've known as Power BI workspaces, they all sit there and you can access, all these different tools can access the data, okay? So, you know, who's it aimed at? Well, you know, looking at these things, really, you know, Power BI was aimed at the business user. It was a grassroots movement. Business users started adopting it and almost IT were late to the party, catching up and then implementing it. There was sort of like a sneaky launch by Microsoft, if you like. It was the Excel users that sort of drove my, a Power BI demand. With Microsoft Fabric, it's really, in my opinion, aimed at the database administrators, the data scientists, the data engineers, the people doing sort of data um, organization, orchestration, preparation, that sort of enterprise scale. But it's priced at a level potentially that anybody can use it. And it's also bringing all these separate things that were a complete pain to set up separately, all under one hood. So it's much easier, you know, and that's one of the selling points is everything becomes a bit easier and collaboration is easier, centralization, control of the data, rather than having copies of the data everywhere in this system and that system, you can all bring it under one hood. That's the concept, okay? So, you know, it breaks down the silos of data and um, increases collaboration. Okay, so how do you get Fabric? I'm not gonna go into each one of these, probably topics for other videos at other times. This is the five minute overview, okay? Well, it, it's interesting because if you're the admin, you go into, for Power BI, you can go into the admin portal and you can enable Fabric, okay? Users can create Fabric items and you can make it for the entire organization, which might not be the best idea, or specific, you know, security groups. Um, and then you can turn that on, all right? So that's, that's a way of enabling it. Now, check this out. If I go in as a sort of a user who hasn't, ever clicked on fabric. Up here, if I go to my little image, it says start a trial, okay? And I can upgrade. Now you should discourage people from doing this because each person is starting their own trial and you actually have only got a few, maybe five trials per company. One or two people should be setting up the trials and then assigning workspaces to fabric capacity, okay? The trial lasts um, 60 days. But check this out, this is what's happening by accident. People are going in here, this is person hasn't got fabric, but they see this, they go, oh, what's this? And they go, oh, let's have a look at oh, data factory, I wonder what that is. And then they take a look here and they go, oh, data flows, I'm aware of data flows, I'm not sure, not sure what this is, wonder what happens if I click here. And just clicking that actually starts a free trial. All right, but that's their own capacity for them and it gets limited by, based on the number of people that do this. So this is sort of, you know, Microsoft causing themselves a bit of issue by letting people do that in my view. All right, what you should do is just turn it off for security groups, of certain security groups, set up fabric trial for your organization, however many couple you need. One, probably do it for most people. 
and then you control, you actually set the workspaces to be fabric workspaces. Okay, so I'm in here, okay, I've, I've inadvertently set up a fabric trial, but let's, let's move on past that issue. So if I go to workspaces and I create a workspace, okay, let's call this fabric demo, all right, and I go, oh, if I go to advanced, okay, it's going under the trial capacity. When you start paying for fabric, you can actually enable this. So what I'm saying is somebody should actually control that fabric capacity and then set up these workspaces and then give people access to them. It's probably the better way. It's what Microsoft intended to happen, but that's just not happening. Right, let's click apply. Okay, I can see this being more than five minutes, but I'll try and speed this up. All right, so then you can create things. You can create data flow gen twos. You can do all sorts of stuff. Not gonna go into details. This is not techie. All right, but that's the concept. So all this stuff, right? All these things, these Microsoft Fabric things. Let me just close out of that. Okay, how do you get them? How much do they cost? You know, once that trial's over, I've got 59 days left of my trial now. Okay, so what do I do? Well, check this out. Okay, if I go to my uh, Fabric pricing, so if you pay for the smallest amount of fabric capacity possible, you are paying 156 US dollars a month. That gives you access to those features, okay? The Power BI licensing doesn't change, okay? You still gotta have pro licenses, you still gotta have, you know, whatever you need. Power BI is not affected by fabric pricing, okay? Fabric is a service on top of Power BI, even though Power BI is part of fabric, okay? But they're paid for separately. So you've got all these different costs. If you pay as you go, okay, it's a lot more, but you can turn that off and turn it on whenever you need it. So if you just turn it on for eight hours a day during the week, um, you know, it's gonna be a lot cheaper if, rather than having the, it on all month. That's the price for the entire, if you leave it on all month, okay. Then the only thing for me to flag out here, you know, you just get more computing power, is that when you get to F64 and above, this, these are called SKUs, okay, stock keeping units. When you get to F64 and above, that is premium. It's the equivalent of what used to be the P1 license in Power BI. And the significance of that is, once you've got premium, the end users that you're sharing reports with don't have to have a paid Power BI license for Power BI things. Now Fabric's you know, different to that. Anybody can access the Fabric elements, but if you're sharing Power BI elements, reports, you must have a pro license to look at a report unless somebody has shared a report from an F64 or above capacity workspace. All right, I know that's a little bit confusing. I've got a whole video on Power BI sharing and licensing and stuff. But essentially this F64 is premium capacity and then above that as well. So how much do you need? How much, how many sort of compute capacity units do you need? It's a bit of an unknown. You've got to really try things out. The more things you do, the more data flows you run, the more Power BI reports that are rendered, the more um, data warehouses or lake houses or Python scripts you run, it's using computing seconds. And the more of that you use up, the more the cost is going to be. So again, potentially more videos on those topics in the future. So that's the general sort of, you know, pricing element to it. Um, probably do a start stop video. How do you start and stop automatically on a schedule? I'll do a video on that. But also in the meantime, a couple of people, uh, Gilbert Kevavillier and uh, Sohil Bakshi, they've done great little blogs on how to start stop um, your fabric capacity. And I'll put links in the description below. Okay, so, I think just for now, just for a start, that's probably enough. Um, if you've got questions, if you'd like me to do a video that covers other topics, let me know. But ultimately, you are talking about having workspaces containing elements such as notebooks. Um, to, you can use Python in here. You can create store data in a warehouse. You have lake houses technical terms, okay? 
ultimately the data is being stored in what's known as delta parquet files. And I don't want to go into the techie sort of nuance of this. Think of them like really well compressed, well organized CSV files, probably a terrible explanation. And then Power BI can access those. The data scientists can access those. All these other tools can access them. There's live streaming data as well you can store. There's so many options that it could talk about it for you know another three days. But for now, I think for non-techie people, I hope that gives you an overview. Let me know what you think. Have I confused you? Does this make a little bit more sense now? And I'll do my best to answer your questions if you've got any in the comments below. All right, catch you in the next video.